Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about um, designer resources for creating for Second Life. So, what exactly are designer resources that I'm talking about? Well, types of those include clip art and other graphics, brushes, patterns, shapes, and those types of things, photographs like stock photography that you can use in your designs, fonts um, for type. Um, helpful and also I'll go over some helpful web tools and apps that you can use that are free and you can use them online to um, get some things some materials that you might need to create your designs such as you know textures maybe that you want to sell textures for your mesh um, things to use on your your websites your blogs or in your logos just anything you can think of so before I show you the, some of the resources that I use, I want to just go over the different uh, types of use that, that, are, that is involved in obtaining these resources. I want to help you be aware of the fact that there are terms usually attached to most resources materials that are out there, such as images, photographs, textures, brushes, etc. It's important for you to, to look at these uh, terms that are attached to these materials before you use them so you can save yourself, you know, in the end. Um, you don't want to get in trouble for something like that. So I like to, whenever I use resources for my projects, I always like to search for public domain, uh, free for commercial use, or there are some just free for whatever use and also um, affordable uh, pay sites where you, they have packages that you can buy for affordable prices to use. So I'll just go over briefly those different types of terms um, that are out there for the resources. So the first type of resource That I want to talk about are clip art and other graphics. Um, if you want to get a little image for it to make a pattern or to put on your blog or for anything you can think of around a t-shirt or whatever or in a picture frame, um, these are some places I go that I can find images to use freely, legally. Um, most of them are in the public domain. I've only paid maybe one time for a package of graphics that I needed quickly. Um, one of the sources I love, and that's because this is because I'm a vintage creator, vintage inspired creator, is the Graphics Fairy, which is thegraphicsfairy.com. Um, if you go to her website and say if you want to look for something like um, flowers, vintage flowers, you just type in the search and up public domain images of flowers that you can use. She does sell her own packages that are for her premium membership. Um, those are just packages that she puts together um, that have themes, so those are not free. But uh, these ones I go for are free. And they're just the individual images and they come in very large sizes usually. Um, scanned in images and they're great quality. Um, and they are free for you to use to edit, incorporate in your designs. So that's one resource that I use. Um, another is vin freevintageillustrations.com, same concept, um, all kinds of categories of graphics for you to look through. Um, these are vintage, of course. I'm a vintage creator, so this is like a treasure trove for me. Great thing to use for books, um, you know, anything, cards. So, and then another source I like to use is openclipart.org, or there are several other clip art, public domain clip art websites. You just have to search for them and make sure that they are legit. Um, and these have all kinds of graphics that you can use. Um, 
what I like to do if I visit a website and I'm not sure if what they're offering is public domain or not or free for commercial use, I scroll down to the bottom of the website here and look for their license or terms of use so I can find out exactly how I can use the materials that I download from their website. So here you see unlimited commercial use. Um, this is what you want. Public domain, that's what you want. Just read the, read the fine print and um, save yourself. Uh, also here creativecommons.org is another website that's great that I'm actually new to. I just discovered this as a, as a kind of a catch-all place to uh, search for work that is only in the Creative Commons in the public domain. There are different subcategories of the Creative Commons licenses. For example, some will allow you to use the work for free, but you have to give attribution, like you have to give credit. Some CCO allows you to use it without, with zero um, attribution. So you just look for what's best for you. So say you come to this search box and you want to find something in Google Images that falls under Creative Commons. So I just click Google Image and then I type in here, say I want a picture of apples. It's going to give me images that fall within that license of my being able to use these for free for commercial use with no attribution. So that's a better way to look through Google Images instead of just going there without a filter and grabbing the first image you see. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, the next resource I'm going to jump over to um, are things like brushes, patterns, and other files that you can download and install into your Photoshop and GIMP to use in your designs. One of the places I find brushes is brusheasy.com. Now they've added premium packages and, and brushes, so you have to be careful that the ones you're looking for are free and are free, okay for commercial use. So if I want to type in and search for something like butterflies, it's going to give me the premium ones or ones I have to pay for. Um, the ones without premium, you don't have to pay for, but read the copyrights. It will list the designer, and you can go to that designer's website to look at the copyrights if there are any attached. So, uh, but it is free for a lot of their resources. Um, another one is deviantart.com. This is a community of artists with that pro who provide a lot of um, resources, stock resources for designers. So, say I want to find vintage flower brush. Um, just type it in and it's going to come up with anybody who has uh, brushes for Photoshop or you know like shapes and decorative elements that you can download and use in your in your uh, work. See these were designed in Illustrator. They're brushes for Illustrator, the program Adobe Illustrator, but they have them all over the web for Photoshop. Um, it's just a matter of searching. So DeviantArt is another place I go. They have everything from photographs to patterns to textures to every brushes, all kinds of resources that you can see. They have a, a category here called resources and stock images. Um, perfect way to filter out anything that isn't for designers to use. So all kinds of packages here, pattern papers, you know, just read the terms. Be sure to read the terms before you use them. Um, next, I want to jump into photographs, photography. If you need photographs to use for whatever reason and um, you want them to be free, um, publicdomainpictures.net is one that I go to and they even have patterns sometimes here that you can use and sometimes they're seamless, which is awesome. Uh, they will have advertisements for other paid sites, just ignore those. But see, they have lots of stuff here you can use, and you click on it, and if you want to donate to the designer, you can, but they have the free downloads here. And if you want to download it at a larger size, premium download, I assume, is a paid feature. I always download the, the free sizes. So that's another one. I know another source of free stock images is Morg File, uh, which has free photographs that you can use public domain stock photography. Uh, you would just search for whatever you want. And all kinds of really nice quality images um, that you can download. So that's for photography. And then say you want to mess with your photograph and, and do something cool, add something to it. Um, here is an online, this is actually should be under the, the, the web tools and apps, but 
I'll show you now. It's a it's a, a Pixlr Express. Um, what you do is just go to the website. It's Pixlr.com. I'll put these links in the description, um, and just click Browse. Find your picture that you want to edit, and just have fun with it. Um, they have all kinds of like buttons here that you press and gives you different effects if you want to add a vignette. Um, this is a very powerful, fun tool to use. You can get all kinds of different looks just from playing with the buttons, the features they have. They have one of my favorites is Vintage, which is in effects. Vintage, and then they have these filters, these overlays and filters that make your image look vintage. So this is what I think a lot of bloggers use for their photographs. This is just one probably of many online editors that you can use. Um, it's a quick quick and dirty way you know, to get around going into Photoshop and adding your own adjustment layers and color adjustments and stuff like that. Um, so that's something that's useful. Um, let's see. I want to, before I go to the other web tools, I want to jump in and do fonts. So one of the, re the sites I use is Font Squirrel because they have free for commercial use fonts um, available. So, you know, all kinds. Uh, they have like vintage style, you know, script. Slab serifs, the slab serifs are really cool. Um, just click on the one you want and you download the file. I'll make another video on how to install these resources. So this is just an overview. If you want to test drive the font, you just type your text to see what it will look like in the font. And there it is. So fontsquirrel.com. There is another one um, called 1001 fonts, I believe. That is the same thing, free for commercial use fonts. And if they do have any special terms or, or charges on them, look for look around this area where the dollar sign is. The green dollar sign means free for commercial use. If it's red, it means it's free for personal use. You want to always distinguish between free for personal use and commercial use. Because if you're going to sell anything that you use these resources in, it's considered commercial use. If you're just going to use it to hang a picture on your wall and your home and not sell it, that would be for personal use. So always keep that in mind. Um, so those are fonts for typography for your logos and your advertisements and blogs and whatever. Um, now I'm going to jump over to the web tools. So we already did Pixlr Express. Um, say to use is a sketch free online sketch tools. Um, this is one I, I used to use a lot. So say you're just like you have this idea in your mind and you don't want to get out pencil and a paper but you don't want to forget what it was you saw in your mind. Um, I don't know say for like a ring design, a vintage ring design, whatever you know this is really bad but this gives you an idea of a quick way that you can just come and get your idea out and save the file and then come back to it later when you are ready to jump in Blender or Photoshop and actually create the design. So and this has you know colors that you can use and I guess they've added some new features here with different overlays. Um, the online, the free online sketch pads are a great um, companion to have when you don't have a piece of paper and a pencil handy. Um, also I want to, oh, I didn't cover textures, so let me do that now. Textures are another big thing. If you're looking for textures for your clothing or for a wallpaper or anything you want to use to build in um, in SL, um, come to free public domain, free for commercial use texture sites. Um, you know, some of them might not be seamless, but you can either make it seamless or just use find ones that are already seamless. I'll do a video on how 
to make something seamless if you need to do that. I'll do that at a later time. But this is one site that does public domain free for commercial use. Um, there are others out there. You just have to find them. Be careful. Um, and so that's for textures. Um, this is a color scheme generator. These are fun to use if you're having trouble deciding what is a good color that goes with, say, you know, this mm, teal color. Um, you want to know what's maybe complementary to this color. They have these different options you can choose up here for analogous monochromatic adjacent, which is like analogous um, color schemes, colors that go with the color you chose that will present with that color in harmony. Um, these are fun to play with uh, if you don't have that natural sense of design for color. So I'll do more another video on color and I'll go more into detail about the color wheel and what is what are tertiary colors, what are analogous colors, what are complementary. Um, but that's a fun subject to do. And um, so there are a bunch of color scheme generators online. And the last thing I want to show for helpful web apps and tools is something that is really central to my organization as a creator. That is Trello. Um, I know many people use this for different reasons. You can create these boards, these different boards, which provide you this layout of cards. It's like laying out cards on a table. And each car within each card, you have um, these lists that are cards uh, of themselves. So if I have like a to-do list, this is a to-do card for something particular. You can open this up and create a checklist in here. So to-do for store, for my store. You know, I can add a checklist of items like, you know, um, update gotcha scripts, you know, whatever. And, that, and then once you add an item here, if you've done it, you can come and check it off and it's crossed off your list. And then you can add another checklist, save for marketplace. So stuff that I want to do on my Second Life Marketplace store. I want to maybe check the, U, the SL URLs to make sure they all lead to my current main store location in World. And once that's done, check it off. So it's a very helpful tool and you can add people to these boards. You can add them with their email addresses so that they can view and add to the cards. Um, so it's good for teams. And see, I have one for my events where I'll put cards in here where I list the items that I want to make for those events. And as I create the item, I check it off the list. So Trello is free and very, very, very powerful, useful um, tool for organ staying organized. Um, most of what I do, I wouldn't be able to do without lists and calendars. And I'm going to do another separate video on um, Google Drive because uh, that's also central to my whole system that I rely on to create. So those are just some quick uh, resources that you can go to. Um, I just wanted to give you a feel for how to search for things to use in your designs the right way instead of just going to Google Images and pulling anything you see. Um, there are ways to do it. It just takes a little bit of work. I mean, if you don't have the time or ability to create the resources yourselves, then use the time to find one, you know, materials that you are allowed to use and use them in the right way. That's how I feel. So um, I, there are millions of variations of these tools and, and resources and sites that I've shown. Uh, it's just a matter of finding the ones that are for you that you like best. Um, just be careful of sites that are not legit. Um, sites that pull images from the web from wherever and have watermarks all over them and claim that they are public domain, not the case. Always look carefully at the, the materials that you are about to, to download. Uh, let me show one more uh, place that you can actually go to. It's Creative Market. Dot com is another source that has not only free but uh, you know graphics and templates and all kinds of things that you can pay for for very cheap. So if you want to go to graphics and then there's some certain type of uh, element that you're looking for for your blog or for your you know your your texture, they have them here. They have tons of beautiful handcrafted created by artists 
packages of designs that you can use and they're very cheap considering I mean some of them are like five dollars ten dollars twenty dollars for a pack and you get to use those with terms just check their terms um, if you're allowed to use them in for your commercial designs um, so this is a good resource creativemarket.com they have everything from photos to graphics um, illustrations um, you know vectors whatever all kinds that are fun to use even fonts like hand-drawn hand-created fonts um, that you can use and I think every week they, they compile a package of uh, resources from different designers that they provide for free so those are something to look out for um, so anyway that is sorry this is so messy it's all over the place I'm doing this quickly I just threw this together um, hopefully it can help some of you out there who are trying to do this on your own who are trying to find resources to use in your own designs if you don't have the time to do make these resources on your own sometimes you don't have the time to sit down and sketch out a border for your your blog or you know something decorative to use for your texture or whatever so I hope this helped and my next video will probably be about how to install some of these resources on your computer and stay organized in that way. So thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.